For example, once again, uh, we have just seen how to uh, use quadrants, um, then how to uh, use transics. Well, let us see how to uh, combine transics and quadrants and uh, use for more efficient data collection in ecological studies. So this is all about transics and quadrants. So very brief, but I hope that it will be useful for uh, you. So uh, here is all about transics and quadrants. So how to uh, mix uh, transics and quadrants. So it's not only uh, the transic thing that you're just looking at uh, in the uh, field in reality, but uh, sometimes you need to mix uh, the theory of transics and quadrants together. So <clears throat> let, let us discuss on the diversity of transics and quadrants here. The first one is that uh, point intercepts uh, along a transic line. So this is basically a, basically a transic line where uh, uh, on every interval based on your uh, species that you're looking at some may be uh, recurring uh, as small as uh, 0.5 meter between two, uh, two uh, intervals of the <coughs> transics <coughs> some may be recurring uh, 1 uh, meter some may be even rec uh, recurring uh, 50 meter between two uh, uh, intervals so uh, usually uh, if the plant species are quite uh, less uh, the the points between two intervals are, um, are less like less like uh, 0.5 uh, meter. So let us see that this is the transic uh, that we have chosen, and uh, this is basically a measuring tape. On the measuring tape, uh, we are taking a, a 0.5 uh, meter measurement. Uh, on every 0.5, we have got uh, points located there. So <clears throat> point intercept is basically uh, on these points. If there are intersections right on that point, we count the plant as uh, our sample. So uh, let's say that this is one point and let's say there was one uh, a plant. So if we count that plant, let's say uh, this point had one, let's say this point had one. So in this transit line, a uh, through point intercept method, we got three plants so a point intercept is basically uh if the plant is either touching or applied is either right under that point intercept um, uh, we count the plants so uh, in this case we are counting this one we are counting this one we're counting this one and we also counting this one so these are how point intercept method is so in this one we are counting even this plants and these plants together so uh, that's how it is um, the disadvantage of uh, using point intercept method is that um, if our uh, measuring tape is quite thick or if the strip that we are taking is quite thick uh, there may be chances that smaller plants or smaller uh, insects that we are trying to study may be right under the tape and uh, we may not be able to count those that's the only disadvantage but advantage is that um, in a very large area if you have less time and if you really want to do your study in a very quick fashion then a point intercept method is one of the most simplest method that you want to take again if the uh, area is very heterogeneous and even in nature point intercept method may not be the best uh, uh, transit uh, method that you want to take up the second one is the mixture of um, uh, uh, visual estimate with the quadrant using the tra transit so basically uh, uh, you still have those points uh, uh, on your uh, transit line let's say uh, uh, these points are on the transit lines still have and we want to see the vegetation change from uh, vegetation change as we go away from the wetland away from the lake and if you want to do that, uh, we use a quadrant. So whatever we find inside that quadrant, we try to um, <clears throat> we try to note this down. And uh, as we know that uh, if we uh, uh, get information from these quadrants, we can uh, take up uh, uh, three kinds of information. We can uh, look at the cover, we can look at the density, we can look at the uh, frequency, and uh, the last one, is, the last one that we can look at is. We can even look at the 
uh, abundance um, a cover frequency density and we can even look at the count so uh, so that's how uh, we uh, combine uh, the transient and quadrant um, uh, you may want to choose uh, to place your quadrant to one side of the transit or you can also choose to keep your quadrants uh, in uh, an alternative fashion in an alternative fashion so uh, you may want to keep your water right on the point that where you want to collect or you may want to uh, collect you may want to uh, uh, place your quadrants uh, in an alternative uh, fashion like this or you may want to keep your quadrant right on the one sided of the transit so that's on you uh, again you need to refer literature based on which you want to uh, uh, lay out your uh, transaction quadrants and you need to cite that literature so uh, in this method for uh, looking at the diversity of intertidal organisms from ocean to the shorelines they have used the quadrants uh, leads right on the point so this is one of the points that they needed to uh, study on the transaction so this is the quadrant that they have laid out so this is the mixture of quadrant and uh, transit. Um, there are some quadrants which are uh, you must have learned in uh, botany that we, which are uh, basically divided uh, through the strings into uh, more number of smaller quadrants. Let's say uh, these quadrants are again divided into more number of smaller quadrants uh, through the use of strings or uh, uh, thread so these are the intersection of this uh, point we can even uh, use this use this kind of quadrants instead of the one whole plane and this one has advantages because this one can really uh, look at uh, the cover person and the uh, the uh, cover person the intersection uh, of the lines which we'll be looking at in the next type of uh, line uh, tra transit and quadrant method but this kind of uh, uh, quadrant which is being modified based on uh, addition of um, uh, lines and strings to make uh, more number of uh, grids can be useful for uh, mainly for looking at density and uh, uh, cover of that plant because uh, we know that if one plant is just here wholly uh, uh, taking up one space then we can directly count the rest of the species and divide these one with the whole total and we can directly see the person cover of this species compared to all these species so you can also use that one um, uh, the the other uh, uh, type of uh, uh, transit and uh, quadrant method that I've just said that we will be looking at uh, next slide is this one uh, we're using exactly the framed uh, quadrant which has got more uh, grids inside so basically uh, this is our uh, transit and we have kept uh, one one uh, or uh, interval which interval on the transit lines and we can either use this point so in uh, point intercept method, what we said was that these are the points and whatever plants and animals that were intersecting right on these points are being counted as some sample and uh, uh, that's point intercept. But uh, the modification with the point intercept within the quadrant is that we add quadrant on these points and we are trying to modify the point intercept a little more with the use of these quadrants and these quadrants are basically uh, uh, greeted like this ones with the help of uh, strings or thread and uh, then we count the intersection that the plants or the animals that we are looking at uh, has on these uh, quadrants so let's see that uh, each quadrant looks like this one so this has got uh, uh, nine intersection, nine in intersection one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So only those plants or those uh, small uh, insects or small animals which are uh, intersecting right on those intersection of the quadrants are being counted. Um, so there are nine uh, intersection and let's say that we want to uh, study this plant species A and uh, uh, according to the visual quadrant method we should be counting all all uh, six uh, plants but instead of point intercepts uh, within quadrant we are just going to count this is one that's intersecting with the, uh, the intersection point two only three and rest of these three are not being counted so what we count is only those three uh, plants which are right on the intersection on the uh, quadrate uh, uh, intersection lines and this risk uh, three which are not actually present on the intersection are not being counted so the number of uh, or the the number of uh, uh, or the percentage uh, cover of this plant is basically uh, your answer above so this is basically three the total possible hits so these are total possible uh, intersection that we sh must should have actually is nine and into hundred so so whatever uh, that we get is uh, uh, the percentage of that plant in that area uh, using the point eight set within the quadrant method uh, this is a recent uh, method now uh, uh, people are ecologists are using a photo quadrants where uh, photograph of that quadrant uh, photograph exactly fitting that quadrant is being uh, shot and uh, uh, we can take back the photo uh, photographs and uh, look at that photograph uh, and uh, analyze what are the plants and animal species that we are found exactly on uh, that uh, quadrant. So we can basically take photographs of that quadrant. And uh, if we are amateur students or if you are amateur uh, uh, people who are not used to be the identification of the plants and animal species, it's very important uh, to use this kind of uh, uh, quadrant methods, photo quadrant, and take back to the lab or take back to an expert who knows how to identify these plants and animal species, and they may help you to um, identify uh, these plants and animal species through the photograph. So photo quadrant is a very recent method. You can use that uh, method. So it can be taken with uh, the camera which exactly fits with the quadrant or even if you do not have the that kind of uh, camera facilities you can always use your normal camera or um, uh, normal phone camera also um, uh, uh, lay out the quadrant uh, firstly on that area and try to click the picture take back to uh, the station and try to relax yourself and count and identify the plants and animal species so that's again recent so um uh it's being usually explored in uh, areas where uh, you want to see the aquatic uh, species diversity uh, where it's very difficult for us to uh, uh, identify each and every species underwater because um we do not have much time uh, oxygen may run, run out our body temperature may be affected in the long run so uh, pictures have been uh, usually taken and taken back to lab for identification. So that kind of things are coming up now and you may want to again try that. That's again one of the methods. So the last thing that uh, is under the transit is like I said is um, uh, point transit. So like I said we have got line as well as we have got point. So in case of line we traverse through the line but in case of point we do not have the length of the the transit so the lines have zero length and what we uh, do is um, uh, we lay out our uh, points in the city area where we want to visit that and we upload that into our gps handset or uh, smartphone gps then we go to that area and uh, uh, actually the after reaching that area the process is the same so we either uh, count 
uh, from that area or we either uh, note down plants and species are falling right on that uh, point. So uh, these are basically uh, techniques that's being used by ornithologists where they go to these points where they do the uh, 360 uh, uh, observation, 360 degree observations of uh, birds uh, looking at the regular time interval and that's it with um, uh, point transect sampling. So take these slides, uh, read yourself, you'll get more information. All the added information are right under uh, every slide, so there are notes given on every slide. Thank you so much.